Hey Ticklers, as you may recall a while back when I was doing my build vlogs, I told you that I wasn't really going to be doing any computers that weren't particularly interesting or cost effective anymore because it just gets to be repetitive and more of the same. And also, you may have noted that I very rarely, in fact I don't think I have to this date, used an i7 of any generation in any of my build vlogs. Because generally speaking, they don't help a lot in gaming performance and they're considerably more expensive than their i5 counterparts. But, what if you happen to find an i7 for an i5 price? <laughs> okay, so one thing I want to note before we start, the rules for this video format have changed. I will be counting cases at no greater than $30 value in the final tally. And the reason being is pretty simple. I build these systems for resale. That's what they're for. They're here to fund the channel. They make me a little bit of money so that I can keep this whole thing moving and actually do some charity work as well. And that said, I buy cases that are new on sale and a little bit prettier than your average budget case or your average scrapyard fund that you can just get for pretty much zero dollars so i have to spend a little bit more to make these pretty but of course you don't it doesn't matter what case you put these parts in what matters is the value of the core components and how much that costs you so if i buy a case that costs more than 30 dollars, it will be capped at 30 for the sake of the final tally but if it costs less it will be noted as such and the money will be saved and discounted from the total get it okay i think that's pretty fair okay so enough of that let's jump into the part list start with the boring stuff first this time which is kind of unusual i know but bear with me cooler master m600 600 watt power supply is going to be powering this thing it's semi-modular it's certified bronze it's not the greatest but it passes all the necessary tests so good there for $30 not a bad deal I would have liked to pay 25 but you take what you can get moving on to something else equally boring we have the RAM now I bought a bunch of like G skill that you know with, with the red little bitties on it uh, and the heat spreaders uh, four gigabyte sticks I bought a whole bunch of them for $15 a unit which was a little high but at the time RAM prices were a touch higher and I could justify it I afterwards picked up some value RAM for much less per unit uh, so these just kind of ended up sitting here. I had about maybe 16 or 20 of them sitting in the bin. When you get a deal as good as this system, you take that opportunity to put some of the pieces that you didn't necessarily get the best deal on and throw them in the system. And that's what's going on here. I've got four sticks, four gigabytes each for a total of 16 gigabytes at 1600 megahertz. Paid $15 a stick, so it's a total of 60 for the RAM. Not bad, but again, could have done probably $10 less at the very least in different circumstances. Next up we have storage, Samsung 840 Pro, or maybe not, maybe it's just a plain 840, because it's an OEM SSD, and I didn't quite look up the model number to see what it was analogous with in terms of the retail model, but it's a 256 gigabyte drive. I am certain it is of the 40 generation, the 840, and of course it's $45. I got it in my whole lot of SSDs that I bought a while back for $45 a piece. 45 bucks for 250 gigabytes is a fantastic deal, can't go wrong. Moving on to part two of this part list, which is the more interesting portion. So I did poorly on the first half, but in this half, you'll see that I did quite well. And it started with a visit to a gentleman that was selling an EVGA GTX 780 for the win edition, three gigabytes VRAM for an even hundred dollars Canadian, which is absolutely fantastic. So while I was there, I asked him the one question you should always ask people selling extra cheap shit, and that is, do you have anything else for sale? As it turns out, he lived 10 minutes away from where we were meeting, and he also had an Asus Sabertooth P67 motherboard with an Intel i7-2600K, and he sold me those as a pair for $130, bringing the total for those three components to $230. Bucks. Now, to be clear, usually a GTX 780 goes for about 200 by itself these days. So that is one fuck of a come-in-your-face worthy deal, like straight up just Spider-Manning it right into your nose. And the final piece of the puzzle comes from the cooler. I managed to pick up a Noctua NHD14 for $30, although only the center fan was included with it. And I didn't have the brackets for the remaining like ends of it, so I just I'm kind of just gonna leave it with one fan. It's only a three-pin fan, so I actually had to connect it to a chassis fan header because only they will do voltage control as opposed to PWM. Anyhow, everything is working fine in the system. Temperatures are great, even with an OC of 4.4 gigahertz on that 2600K. 
And I stuffed it all in a Corsair 100R that I picked up for some price that's greater than my $30 cap. But like I said, I've got tons of cases in the corner I can just show you that I picked up for free. Just a whole closet full of them. And you should have access to those too. So if you want to save an extra bit of money on this build and get like a shit case, it could cost you as little, and here's the total, as $395 Canadian before you add Windows. But it actually brought it up to $455 with the case because it was about $60. But like I said... To be realistic, you can still get a brand new case for 30 bucks, and that's what you would be doing in this scenario. So we're going to call this a $425 build plus $40. Ah, not pulled yet. No $40 for OEM Windows because the guy who sold me this motherboard left his fucking Windows 10 activated. And yeah, we get to save a little money. So that brings us to $425 flat. I have a feeling we're going to break some of our own personal best records. So let's roll to the footage of me trying to assemble this piece of shit and the benchmarks. So as you can see, very predictably, this system featuring a GTX 780 and an i7 2600K performs remarkably similar to the R9 290 and i5 2500K that we put together in the last build vlog. It's a little bit worse in some titles, a touch better in others, because the GTX 780, even the further win edition, is going to be slightly worse than the R9 290, but nonetheless, it is among one of the more beastly systems we have put together this year. No surprises there. Where this system kicks serious ass, thanks to those deals I found, is in the bottom chart. Dollars per FPS come in at an even $4.50 for every point of FPS we achieved in our benchmark suite, which is absolutely fantastic, and it's going to be very hard to beat going forward. In addition to being a great gaming system, this also makes a fantastic little editing rig, which is something to consider as well. Also, if you are in the market for streaming and OBS and other stuff like that, of course you will be familiar with the fact that quad cores without hyper-threading may often contribute to a performance performance degradation in the games you happen to be trying to stream and this is because CPU resources are tight the game might be fighting with the program for those resources and an i7 will help alleviate that with its hyper threading thirdly this system minus the graphics card is pretty much still set up to go with modern graphics solutions for the most part. You may get a little bit of bottlenecking, but a 2600K is still going to serve you very well with everything up to and including a 1080. So if you wanted to, you could take that GTX 780 that's in here, sell it at a profit for another $50 to $200 more than you paid for it, take that money, put it with some more of your other money, and get like a GTX 1070. And then suddenly for about whatever it is, six, seven hundred bucks, you've got a modern 1440p even 4k capable gaming system ready to kick all your friends asses and fuck them in the butt and for the record yes i did attach a usb powered dildo to this machine as uh requested by my client so you can actually fuck your friends in the butt with it just saying. Anyway, I think we'll call that one another build vlog. For the record, in the future, I think I'm going to rename the series to something like Junkyard Builds or something more catchy. Anything that won't get me sued by Linus Tech Tips. And I figured I would just put this one together because I felt like sharing. It was It's more of a humble brag, really. I got so lucky on those deals. I was so fortunate to find that guy who seemed to be in a relative hurry to get rid of his stuff that I just had to share it. But, of course, I'm all about lessons. And if there's a lesson to be learned here today, it's this. If you wait and are patient and you have the money set aside and you are diligent and you check ads on a daily basis and you keep alert and aware, eventually a deal is going to come along that is literally going to disintegrate your underwear. It's so good. It's just they're just going to fall to the ground as powder and some some coke fiend is going to come by with a straw and just <laughs> snort them right up. As for the next video, I think we're going to be doing another shitbox, shitbox 3. There are going to be some component upgrades. I got a new motherboard and processor that are actually working and confirmed and validated and ready to go. So I'm excited about that. Oh, and also we're coming up on 2000 subscribers, which is really cool. And my channel has only been around for a few months and already 2000 of you have deemed me worthy of subscription. So I'm going to be doing something kind of fun. I'm going to be giving away some stuff. I got a lot of stuff. I got lots of stuff. And it might not be physical hardware. Maybe it will be. But I'm definitely going to be doing a giveaway to all those people who are loyal subscribers. Sitting here watching me grin and make jokes like an idiot. Anyway, at Ofa on Twitter. Tech Tickle on Twitch. Hook me up. Look me up. And see you again in the next one.